Hello everyone, this is Silver Blood. When you look for satisfaction, that's when you meet dissatisfaction to the greatest degree. Anytime you look for joy, that's when you see the sadness. Every time you're sad, that's when you see the joy. See, it's an impossible connection. And uh, I hear so-called gurus tell people to seek a nothingness. Uh, and I'm, I'm very much against this. Because uh, we're supposed to be something in life. Life's experience uh, are supposed to go through certain stages to teach us about different energies. And each uh, stage has its own teaching. So to, to jump from, for a young person to jump into nothingness, that's a, a very wrong interpretation of spirituality, really. This nothingness appears naturally in life. This detachment appears when you are fed up with life and you have seen through all the illusions, you have known all the truths and all the lies, and then a natural detachment arises, uh, a nothingness, so to say. A, a will to to not be a part of this anymore. Uh, and we, sh we shouldn't hurry hurry up that process to reach that stage. We, we should enjoy life in the moment where we're at and not always look on the horizon for a new, for, for something else to come later. Always looking forward for something to come. Uh, that's not the way. We have to be present. We have to be conscious and we have to learn all the lessons along the journey. So any guru that tell everybody to seek nothingness, that uh, it don't solve anything. Each person will face death. That's a part of the journey. We are in the samsara, in the, in the wheel of death and rebirth. So death is a part of the experience. And when we, when we face death, we have to have certain uh, practice. We have to practice meditation and self-control, selfhood, to walk through the death in a proper way. And, and if we practice the nothingness as our ultimate goal, uh, it will not serve us a lot in the, in the spirit world. In the world after life, in the afterlife, practicing nothingness will not uh, make you firm or strong. Life is a school. And each instinct have to sit deep. Like the Kung Fu disciple, we practice to, to beating and punching and hurting ourselves. So we, we learned the drill and our soul learned the, the harshness of realities. We are sensitive creatures, it hurts a lot, so we learn. And to be able to withstand the terrible, it will give you a, 
a glorious result in the afterlife. And so, so these gurus, mainly they, they want to make money and to create a crowd, get the gathering. Uh, it has nothing to do with each person's spiritual journey, which is individual, meant to, to learn their own lessons from their own karmic record. There is no universal fix for humanity. We should study the laws of nature. Study the spiritual laws. That's better than seeking nothingness. And to practice oneself with meditation and a proper diet, strictness, self-discipline, all this will serve the soul well when it comes to reality of souls. When we say that we should seek nothingness, we, we speak of the reality of humans. Because <laughs> the soul is nothing about that. Soul is about becoming something out of the nothingness. Soul is becoming more and more conscious. And the, the more the higher reincarnation, the more sense of self, the more conscious, the more wisdom, the more knowledge. So that is the natural progression. So it's, it's very important that we let people develop in their own, in their own way. to experience what they must experience. Uh, and we don't demand that everybody will be the same. Every, everybody don't have the same conditions or terms in life. You know, equality is herd mentality. That everybody must live the same. That is the maximum herd mentality. Collectivism to the maximum. Uh, and uh, of course there is a, a certain spectra of humanity, of reality that we, we live in. But uh, each uh, journey is individual, completely individual. And each one creates their own destiny individually. So the, the individual is very important. Uh, and the nothingness and the unity and all that, uh, that's bullshit. That's, what, that's the human reality they try to explain through spiritual terms. Which is foolish. We can speak uh, human language and talk about human unity without involving each one's spiritual journey. But uh, it don't make any money, right? <laughs> so we have to get people along on the ship and start filling our pockets with money. And that's the same with Christianity. All the New Age uh, Hinduism and stuff is, has become like uh, Christianity. Christian sects that, that pull money out of people. So that one should be aware of that. So, before, and before we start meditating and search nothingness, we, we, we should be honest with ourselves and really look at, at our true situation. What, what were we going to face in our destiny? And does these uh, teachings fill any purpose? And, and all aspects of religion that serves man yeah you can implement them you can bring them they will serve you but you are in you have to be 
very honest to the voice of reason inside of yourself. Because it's very sensitive. And we can hurt ourselves tremendously if we don't really are honest. Uh, and it's very obvious now in, <coughs> in this uh, corona crisis. You can see the religious people, they break down and they repeat the mantras which they have been indoctrinated with. Uh, and they have never sounded more empty uh, before in history. This is the emptiest call of a religion that I ever heard. Uh, many of them are <coughs> robotic repeaters uh, without any human touch, human sense. Uh, and that, that was not the purpose of learning religion and teachings. Uh, it was to make us more human. It was to make us enjoy the human experience more. Not to hate the human experience and search for something else. Because nature, which is the smartest thing, because it's always adept, uh, it knew that life uh, it will happen gradually, by itself. But we have a creative mind. We want to make, uh, fill things with meaning that we don't understand. But mostly it's our own emptiness that we see. An emptiness that don't really exist. So we're trying to fix something that uh, comes from our mind and has no connection with reality. Instead of being in full connection with your true destiny and now, where you are, where your two feet stand. You, you will, you search, they, they, they go back to their programming which is an indoctrinated seekers that was uh, indoctrinated to slave sects to enslave themselves spiritually, to make money for others and make others' movements work. <clears throat> but I think that many have awakened now to the spiritual aspect and, and certainly this crisis has given us uh, an opportunity to go back to faith go back to the to the good feeling uh, and think about uh, the eternal the afterlife and, and the big questions because we find that the, the illusion is not we can we can't trust it <laughs> it's always gonna bite us and as soon as we think it's cool and we feel good something strikes us again that's that's the nature of, of physical reality so, so we, we can never trust it. And the crisis, the virus crisis now, it reminds us of our mortality. It reminds us of our weakness, and this is good. We need to be reminded. We seem to have forgotten. We, we behave like swines. Uh, the human race don't understand that everything they create will come back to themselves because we're all co-creators in the karmic wheel. And all life is family. So, yeah. All right, I don't want to bother you too much, but uh, think twice before listening to gurus that uh, speak about becoming nothing. Th that should make you suspicious. All right, take care, everybody. Bless.